Hi, welcome to Raw Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on linear representation of data. Here I have a set of data given. It says find the linear model for the data. Well, I notice so this is my input. Input. This is my output. Output. And I notice right away that my input is going up at a step of one. That makes things easier. What I'm really doing when I'm looking for a linear model is I'm trying to figure out how the input affects the output. I notice when the input is zero, that means it has zero effect, that my output is 21. The biggest mistake I see in a problem like this is students immediately go to X and Y because we love X and Y. We are told X and Y from day one in algebra. X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. But right now I want M and H because you're told right here what variables to use. So really make sure that you're using the correct variables and that you're case sensitive. If you're told lowercase m and lowercase h, use lowercase m and lowercase h. So h is equal to 21. That's what h is equal to when m, our input variable, has no effect on it. Now, when m goes up by one, h goes up by four. When m goes up by another one, h goes up by another four and that pattern holds. That means every time m goes up by one, h goes up by four. I could write the equation like this. If you would like it in the more standard form, you can write 4m plus 21. Doesn't matter, they're both meaning the same thing. Use the model to complete the table. You can also use the pattern. Plus four is 37, plus four is 41, plus four is 45 graph the model. Now we have seven data points and the habit I see students doing is they want to graph all of these points. I ask you not to do that. Unless you are specifically told to graph all these data points, don't. It's just going to get into the way. My suggestion is graph the first and the last. If you graph the first two, what happens is they're really close together and when you line up your ruler, you're probably gonna swing out on the far end of your graph and it's not going to be as accurate as it should be. So I would graph, if I were to graph this, and I am, I would graph 0, 21, which is right here. And then I would go all the way out to 645 and I would graph the point 645. And then when I had those points graphed, I would then go and get a straight edge, get a ruler, and connect the dots. Now, here are some things. Get a ruler, they're not expensive. You could use the side of a straight book or ID, or there's a lot of things that are straight in the world. Use a straight edge when graphing a line. It gives you the accuracy you need. And when you have a wobbly line, like when I'm grading tests, I take off if the lines are wobbly. It's so simple to have a straight edge. Arrows, arrow one, arrow two, because these lines are infinite. Now, if this were a story problem and there was a domain and negatives didn't make sense, then sure, you wouldn't have that arrow. But in this situation where I'm just giving you a random set of data and you have no idea what this data has to do with, arrows are perfectly not only perfectly acceptable, they're pretty important because you don't know if there's anything limiting the data. And maybe it's not limited on this side. Maybe it should be limited on this side. Who knows what is causing a limit on the data? And since the data is not connected to a story problem, there is no limit. So when graphing a line, worry about the line with arrows. Now, a big mistake I see, especially if you're using online systems, is you wanna plot all the points again especially in an online system that can get in the way if any of the points aren't perfectly plotted or if you plot a point twice by accident. All of these things can be counted as a mistake on the computer. The computer is only as good as the programming and it isn't always programmed by people who understand the question they're programming the answer for. It's not a fault of the programmer. They're programming a lot of things. So the best thing to do is just plot the line with arrows and don't plot the individual points. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.